Well, basically, we are focusing on, on two major uh, issues related to HIV cure research at the moment. The one is to really find out which are the so-called reservoirs where the virus hides despite effective therapy. And we know that these uh, are dormant cells which are infected by the virus, uh, yet we do not know all of the cells where the virus can hide. We do know some of them, but not all of them. And we do not know exactly how and where they are distributed throughout the body. That means that they are at different anatomical sites. So we learn a lot from analysis from the blood, but we need to know much more about things from the gut, from the lungs, from other tissues like brain and also lymph nodes, uh, because these are the anatomical sites where most likely uh, the virus persists despite uh, very effective therapy. And the, the second topic we are actually interested in now is to find ways um, to actually heal cells from HIV infection. And this healing of HIV infected cells, uh, we are thinking that we may use or get the chance uh, to use so-called nucleases. Now, now what are nucleases? Nucleases are basically um, enzymes which can cut out DNA from cells and uh, since the provirus, HIV provirus is integrated in the form of DNA into the host genome, we are trying to exploit these nucleases to cut out inf the, the virus out of infected cells. Actually this works in cell culture. We even know that it works in mice now who are infected with HIV and who have been transplanted with a human immune system. However, this is still a long way to go, uh, but we are pursuing this since we believe that the um, experiences which have been made uh, with the Berlin patient indicate that potential cure is actually possible uh, by using uh, these um, mechanisms, and uh, this is the second line which we are following right now. Right, that's interesting. I've never heard anybody use the word heal, heal in that um, in that setting, but. That's a pretty good way to describe it, to take the HIV out of the cells. Um, so what are the biggest challenges in your research? Well, first of all, I think uh, it is always money. <laughs> <laughs> it is money in that sense that we do have a lot of funding which is related to basic research, but as soon as we are going into the clinic, it becomes extensively, um, extensively, uh, the, the, the amount of money needed is, is, is it's extended by magnitudes because we have to do proper clinical trials and clinical trials involving patients are expensive. So this will be uh, one thing, one major issue is, is uh, clearly funding. Um, there is a lot of funding in the basic research arena, uh, but when it comes up to the translation, uh, the translational part into the clinics, uh, then we have either to find uh, pharmaceutical companies who will um, supplement it or other um, you know, funding sources like MFAR, for instance, and um, this is something uh, which is clearly um, a, a major issue. Uh, well, more scientifically, I think, as I said, uh, we do have um, learned a, a lot of things from the peripheral blood of patients with HIV. However, we uh, have to go into the tissues, and the tissue is much harder to sample because you cannot do, for instance, brain biopsies in patients, right. or you can only take uh, lymph nodes under specific circumstances and also do gut biopsies and so So I think we need to learn um, a, more about anatomical sites where the virus hides, uh, but we need proper um, cohorts of patients which we study. So it's a kind of a past pro toto approach where we use the best characterized patient cohorts, like for instance those ones who can control HIV um, after cessation of therapy, the so-called post-treatment controllers or elite controllers. What makes them so different from others, especially in the sites where HIV um, is hiding, and why can those uh, actually patients why can they actually um, control HIV infection without therapy, whereas others uh, uh, fail to do so?